The Starship, SpaceX's giant rocket designed with the objective of sending humans to Mars and colonize it as Elon Musk likes to put it, has in more ways than one overshadowed its predecessor, the Falcon 9 rocket. Hi, welcome to TechSpace. In this video, we will explain why SpaceX's Starship is better than the Falcon 9 rocket. So stick around to see reasons for yourself also. What's the same? Before we get deep into the differences, it might be best to lay out the similarities between Falcon 9 and Starship. The two vehicles both have two stages that run on super-chilled liquid fuels and have a reusable first stage with legs and grid fins. And they probably have virtually the same avionics and software. What's different? Engines and fuels. At the heart of every rocket is its rocket engine, or in this case, its rocket engines. The Falcon 9, as the name suggests, has nine Merlin 1D engines on its first stage and a single vacuum-optimized Merlin MVAC on the second stage. The Merlin engines used on the Falcon 9 are open cycle, meaning they contain a small baby rocket engine called a gas generator, the exhaust from which is then used to spin a turbine that drives the main propellant pumps. In the case of the sea level Merlin, this exhaust is dumped overboard. However, the second stage's vacuum engine reroutes the gas through the nozzle to provide a layer of cooler gas to keep the extended nozzles from melting. However, with Starship development, SpaceX has cranked everything up to 11. In search of the best rocket engine ever made, they developed a full flow staged combustion cycle engine known as Raptor. The Raptor engine is different from the Merlin 1D engine, such that the gas that would normally be dumped overboard after spinning the turbine is instead directed into the main combustion chamber for use as thrust. There are also two of those rocket engines, each with their own turbines and pumps, the exhaust from which are pumped into the main combustion chamber. One of those is fuel-rich and the other is oxygen-rich. The fuels on board the rockets also differ. The Falcon 9 runs on rocket-grade kerosene, known as RP-1, along with liquid oxygen, LOX a combination often referred to as Carolox, whereas Starship and its Raptor engine run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, otherwise known as Methalox. Liquid methane burns cleaner than RP-1, leaving behind virtually no soot in the engine. It also has the potential to be more efficient, but it is less dense than RP-1, which leads to slightly larger tanks by volume. Let's compare the engine performance. Efficiency SpaceX's Merlin reaches an impressive amount of thrust at 845 kN at sea level and 981 kN in a vacuum. But the Raptor engine is currently in its infancy, running at around 1,650 kN at sea level and can achieve around 1,800 kN in a vacuum. But they're already achieving just above 2,000 kN of thrust on the test stand, and that will be their operating thrust relatively there's another more powerful variant coming. Someday, there's going to be a non-deep throttling booster variant of Raptor that'll be on the outer ring of the booster, and they're targeting closer to 3,000 kN of thrust at sea level and more like 3,200 kN of thrust in a vacuum. The Merlin is pretty damn efficient, achieving 282 seconds of impulse at sea level and 311 seconds in a vacuum. But the Raptor is more efficient, currently achieving 325 seconds at sea level and close to 350 seconds in a vacuum. Chamber Pressure A lot of this performance is due to the chamber pressure inside the main combustion chamber. The higher the chamber pressure, the more potential the rocket has to turn that high pressure into higher thrust and better efficiency too. The Merlin achieves 116 bar of pressure while the Raptor is operationally at around 275 bar currently, but has hit 330 bar on the test stand and will likely reach their goal of 350 bar operationally before too long, knowing SpaceX. Thrust to weight ratio. The Merlin engine has a nutty thrust to weight ratio of around 200 to one, while the Raptor currently is around 107 to one, but increasing to 130 to one, and again, Elon Musk thinks they can get it to match the Merlin someday. 
But over time, we expect the Raptor engine to by far exceed the Merlin in this regard. Because when you have had limitation with the number of engines you can squeeze in a space, the thrust to nozzle exit area ratio matters about as much as thrust to weight ratio. So when it's all said and done, the first stage of the Falcon 9 with its nine engines achieves 7.6 mn of thrust. Falcon Heavy, which is currently the most powerful rocket flying, gets 22.8 mn, and Starship's Super Heavy Booster will end up with about three times the thrust of that at 65 mn. There are a few consumables in the Falcon 9 stored in smaller tanks, like helium, which is stored in a set of composite overwrap pressure vessels, COPVs. The helium is used to maintain a constant pressure of about 3 to 4 bar in the propellant tanks. So as fuel drains out, they put helium, which is extremely undense, in its place. This is done to avoid negative pressure in the tanks and keep the propellant flowing. Starship, on the other hand, does away with these entirely. Since it is not possible to refill the helium tank in Mars, SpaceX will use methane instead, since it can be produced on the surface of Mars through in-situ resource utilization. Consequently, Starship will pressurize the propellant tanks autonomously, meaning, while the engines are running, they'll be pumping some gaseous fuel and oxidizer back in their respective tanks. They will maintain their pressure by allowing some of the fuel to boil and release any excess pressure. This also helps maintain their temperature, as the boil-off cools the fuel, just as humid sweat evaporates in a cool environment. Size, Capabilities, and Construction When it comes to size, the Falcon 9 is 70 meters tall, with its first stage at 45 meters, while the second and the nose cone is 25 meters tall. Despite its height, it can fit completely into the Super Heavy Booster, which is likely 75 meters tall. With the Starship upper stage on top, the entire stack will be approximately 122 meters. That's a little over 52 meters taller than Falcon 9. Capabilities The Falcon 9 can take 22,800 kilograms into LEO when expended, or 15,600 kilograms when reused, like it does for the Starlink missions. It can send 8,300 kilograms on a geostationary transfer orbit when expended, or about 7,000 kilograms when reused, while the Falcon Heavy can take around 63,800 kilograms when fully expended, or around 38,000 kilograms with a two-core return to launch site landing and one core on a drone shipping. But Starship will be able to take over 150,000 kilograms up to LEO. Yes, that will be more payload mass than any rocket ever made, even beating out the Saturn V, which could only put 145,000 kilograms into LEO. It will do this while still being fully reusable. Starship can also put a solid 21,000 kilograms out to a geostationary transfer orbit, despite having to lug its own huge dry mass out there. Yes, that is lower than an expendable Falcon Heavy, but if you expended a Super Heavy booster, it would easily exceed that and expending a Super Heavy Booster is just simply not in the plans. Don't forget, since the whole rocket is reusable, Starship has to take its heavy flaps, landing gear, the payload fairing, and all six engines with it everywhere it goes. So instead, here's where Starship can make up for all that with orbital refueling. If Starship is refueled with just one tanker, it can get that GTO payload capacity right back up to that 150,000 kilogram mark. And if you refuel it enough, it can take 150,000 kilograms all the way to the Moon or Mars. That's game-changing. Payload Bay Another huge upgrade for Starship is its massive payload bay. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy share the same fairing, which is about 5 meters wide and 14 meters tall, with a total usable volume of 145 cubic meters. But Starship's payload bay is a whopping 9 meters wide, and 18 meters high with a usable volume of around 1,000 cubic meters. Yep, that's more pressurized volume than a 747, and there will be an extended payload version coming that is 22 meters in height. When it comes to the payload capacity, the Falcon 9 consisting of both crew and cargo takes up 9.3 cubic meters of pressurized cargo, while the Starship 
has 1,100 cubic meters of pressurized cargo space and can carry up to 100 persons at a time. Starship is capable of taking astronauts to distance in space where other rockets cannot. The Starship, being 9 meters wide and 18 meters high, as compared to the Falcon 9's 5.2 meters width and 13.2 meters height, has the higher cargo carrying advantage. Composition The Falcon 9 is made up of 2,219 aluminum alloy and some carbon composite, while Starship is built from stainless steel 304L. Aluminum is definitely the higher option, but only at cryogenic temperatures, but stainless steel is used on Starship since it needs to handle low cryogenic temperatures as well as re-entry heat for both stages. Elanorons The Starship features a unique bit of hardware called Elanorons, a unique control scheme that will help the vehicle maintain control while re-entering belly first. There, Elanorons will basically be powered by some Tesla's electric motors with a direct drive, Tesla's batteries, or derived from them at least. For larger missions, Starship will have solar panels. Conclusion Starship can take nearly 10 times the payload size of Falcon 9 into orbit, yet it costs less to launch. Due to its being fully reusable, its total cost is basically narrowed down to just the cost for fuel and personnel time. So which one of these do you think has a striking advantage among both rockets? Please do well to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and while you're still around, why don't you click on one of those flashing videos on the screen for more content?